Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Chapter 13a, where we have been talking about protozoa, the animal-like protists. We have been going through the different groups, and today we are going to go through the group that I don't think existed officially when I was your age. I don't know how long it's existed, but it does say I am old. That group is Apicomplexa, sometimes also known as Apicomplexia. Okay, what we do know about them is that they are a parasitic group and they also have the ability to glide to move. They do not have pseudopods, they do not have flagella, they do not have cilia. We will talk about what they do have as we go. Okay, with them being parasitic, if you don't remember what that means, it means they live off of a host, a different organism, and they have to have that organism in order to be able to live. Okay, the example we're going to talk about in this section is plasmodium, which is the protozoa that causes malaria. So we are going to start out kind of at the top up here. We're not going to have to know all this, by the way, uh, with our favorite friend, the mosquito, which drives us nuts and also causes all kinds of death. Not personally, but they carry all of the things that cause it. So basically what you need to realize is the mosquitoes bite someone and this sporozoite form enters the people. Okay, you can see that right here. It says human. Okay, then it's going to affect your red blood cells, these things right here, and also your liver. It's going to multiply like crazy and it's going to pop. And it just keeps doing this over and over and over and over. It very much is like how a virus reproduces when it's inside the human body. Okay, so comes in, goes into cells, liver and red blood cells in this case, multiplies like crazy, pops the cells, these forms, the merozoites are released, they go infect another cell, and on and on and on and on. Okay, now the merozoites can be male and female. So what ends up happening is they don't reproduce inside people, but then another friend, the mosquito, comes along and bites you again. When you're sick with malaria, they don't care. And they take in this form, the merozoite form, which has male and female. You can see they are artfully decorated blue and pink. And what happens is when they go inside the mosquito, then they're going to reproduce sexually. And you end up with a change in form, and it forms, forms an oocyte or an oocyst. And then you end up with the form of the sporozoites, which then travel back to people the next time our mosquito friend bites somebody. Okay, so it, what it has is it has this asexual reproduction, and that's when it's inside a mammal host, like people. And then it has a sexual reproduction part of its life cycle, where it's inside the mosquito. So it alternates back and forth, which is very different than what the other types did. Generally, it either would reproduce sexually or asexually. Uh, however, with these parasitic ones, they alternate back and forth depending on which host they're in. Okay, one time they'll be in the mosquito host, one time they'll be in a human host in this case. Okay, so it's a lot different. Now, looking at the structures of the apicomplexa, amp sorry, um, the big thing you want to know is where it gets its name from, which is the apical complex. Apex, remember, just kind of means the end, the point, okay? And you can tell it has a very definite pointy end versus a round end, okay? So 
The structures of the pointy end, the apical complex, are where it gets its name and what causes it to have the types of functions that it does. The two things that we're especially going to look at are the micronemes and the rop tree. Okay, micro micronemes and rop tree. Okay, the micronemes and the rop tree both produce proteins and enzymes. And they are what's actually responsible for the gliding motion of these organisms. They actually will create a thin film on the surface of a cell. And they have the ability to kind of turn and twist in that thin film. And you'll notice the two different forms that we see here. We talked about how it goes back and forth. You see the long form right here, which is how it would be within the mosquito. And you see these round things over here. We have the sporozoites. These are what are going to be multiplying like crazy inside of a cell. Okay. So what you see is it gets its name from this pointy end because that's where the micronemes and rop tree are. And you have the sporozoites, which are the ones that are going to reproduce asexually. And what you're going to see is how they invade. Okay, This little teardrop is our ampicomplexa friend, plasmodium. And basically to attach, they just touch. <coughs> okay, And the micronemes cause it to stick. Then it says it's going to reorient which basically just means it's going to turn. This is where it's using the gliding effect of things. The micronemes and the rop trees cause it to be able to glide to turn so that that pointy end, the apical complex, is towards the membrane. And then the enzymes of those two things are going to allow it to essentially drill in to a cell. And it goes all the way in. Okay, it's not like a virus that just injects something in. This actually completely and totally enters the cell. Okay, and that's what happens when it invades the human body. Okay, it just, you know, mosquito bites you, drops these things into your body, they burrow in. They enter, and now they are truly within the cell. Now, what happens next is you have these things multiply like crazy. They have the enzymes and things that cause the membrane around it to break down, and then they are free in your body to go infect other cells. Okay, and those membranes are broken down by more structured called exonemes, which just allow it to go out, therefore called exo, it goes out. Okay, it frees them from the cell by destroying the cell. Okay, so then these are free in your blood, they go infect other cells and do the same thing over and over again. And if our friend the mosquito comes along, they will suck these up in your blood and then they'll reproduce in the mosquito and start the whole process all over again. So you can see the apicomplexa are a bit different. They are definitely parasites. If for some reason either of the hosts somehow could not exist, the, the plasmodium will not continue on to the next part of its life cycle. It'll stay where it is. Okay, uh, we have one more video in the series, at least, um, and we're going to talk about some of the unusual types of protozoas. Actually, we and then we will go on to the plant-like uh, protists. There's not a whole lot to say about them, so it won't be a very long video. And later on, 
you will have your test. So make sure you've been studying along the way. If you haven't, make sure you go back and review your videos. Okay, until next time. Miss you all.